Hey everybody, welcome back around to the Blog and Grill. I'm your host, Doug, here with your video blog for January 5th, 2015. It is a new year and a happy new year to everybody out there. We have a great blog plan for you today, as we'll have a look at your New York sports update. We'll also look back at Wild Card Weekend and the college football playoff. But first off, I want to touch base on a sadder note of yesterday, definitely, with the passing of ESPN broadcaster Stuart Scott. Really just a great family man. He battled cancer for seven years, um, an exciting broadcaster. He really allowed people to be themselves, and he pushed the limits. Some thought he was being showy, but he was just being Stuart. So Stuart Scott will be missed, and ESPN will never be the same without him. All right, let's get to the college football playoff. Um, two really good games, and even the blowout game between Oregon and Florida State was really still a good game to watch. It was a very exciting game. Um, really what it came down to was Florida State could not capitalize in the red zone, and they also had way too many turnovers. They turned it over five times on four fumbles and a pick by Jameis Winston. Marcus Mariota, he was great, 26-36 for 338, two touchdowns and a pick. Played very well. They ran the ball efficiently. They carried the ball 45 times for 301 yards. They ran a lot of plays. They ran them quick. They got them done. So their total plays would be, let's see, total plays for them are 81. So they ran 81 total plays to Florida State, who ran right around 70. So Florida State didn't play terrible. But basically what happened is Oregon just scored the ball too quickly. Marcus Mariota really showed that he was the better quarterback in this game. And in the second game, we saw a lot of the same. A fast tempo offense of Ohio State really taking down the pro-style offense of Alabama. Cardell Jones played very well. Um, he did throw a pick, but he also went 18-35 for 243 and a touchdown. The big story had to be Ezekiel Elliott, 20, 20 carries for 230 yards and two touchdowns. Just really lit up that team of Alabama on the defensive side of the ball. Alabama tr was up 21-6 to in the second quarter, and then Ezekiel started to get it going. The big pass in the third quarter from, Devin, from Cardell Jones to Devin Smith really set the tone and put Ohio State ahead for good. So that was a good game to watch. And we have a great matchup now in the national title game. And we're going to talk more about this throughout. I think the quarterback battle you look at has to be favored to Oregon. That's why I think Oregon is favored in this game and likely will win this game because it comes down to quarterback play. And you can make a case that Cardell Jones in just this couple of games has played better than Blake Sims. And they got by a very good Alabama team. And Ohio State is looking like a team that's going to be very good for the next couple of years to come. We'll do some more college football stuff on Wednesday, but right now let's get to our NFL action and our wild card games. First, we'll look at Saturday's games. The first one between the Cardinals and the Panthers, and this just came down to a team that was hot at home in the Carolina Panthers. Cam Newton playing a lot better than he did early on in the year. Really looking like a guy who's going to be able to do quite a bit in this offense that they run, even though he doesn't have a lot of weapons, they still got it done for him. He only threw for 198 yards. He did throw a pick, but he but they controlled tempo in the game. They ran the ball 41 times. Jonathan Stewart leading the way with 24 carries for 123 yards. Lindley and the offense was really not good as their total yards of offense was just 78. Really struggled to get it done and this is a team in Arizona that has to find a quarterback, and it could be Carson Palmer going forward, but they have to find a quarterback if they're going to be successful in the years to come. In the night game, we saw Baltimore and Pittsburgh, and Joe Flacco showed why he is the best road quarterback in the playoffs. He picked up his seventh win in the in on the road in the playoffs as they just really played a very strong game. They forced turnovers, a fumble, and two picks is what they forced, and they just got it done. Joe Flacco, 18-29, 259, and two touchdowns. Really didn't run the ball efficiently, but Steve Smith was good, and they made some big-time plays on the defensive side of the ball. 
So we have the Panthers going to play Seattle, and we have the Ravens going to play the Patriots. And then in the in the Sunday games, we had Andy Dalton once again struggle in a playoff game. I didn't think he was terrible. Um, he threw for 155 yards. They really could not get the running game established. And with the losses of Jermaine Gresham and and the loss of um, A.J. Green, that offense was really one-dimensional. Couldn't get a lot going on the running side of the ball. So they struggled. And Andrew Luck played great. And now he's going to get a shot at Peyton Manning in Denver next Sunday. So that should be a great matchup. And then finally, we left the most controversial game for last here as we will look at the Lions and the Cowboys. Lions jump out to a quick 14-0 lead. Um, really, Romo led the team back. We had the questionable pass interference call, which probably should have been called pass interference, but I don't know how much you can really look at that affecting the game. There was quite a bit of game left. I think the bigger play had to be the punt right after that play where the punter Martin pretty much shanked it um, and... Dallas had very good field position. Romo, the best court, the best QBR in the National Football League this year. Got it done late. Two touchdowns, no picks. A low QBR for him. That's because he got sacked six times, but he was 19-31 for two touchdowns, and Terrence Williams caught both of those. Really, Des Bryant, not much of a factor. Three catches for 48 yards. So the Colts will go to Denver, and the Cowboys will go to Green Bay, and that's going to be a good game. Cowboys versus Packers. Um, next Sunday. That's going to be a great game to watch for sure. All right, time for your New York sports update. The Syracuse Orange moved to 10-4 and four after a 68-66 to win over the Virginia Tech Hokies. They will take on the 9-4 and four Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets on Wednesday night. That game will be at 7 p.m. Notre D or Georgia Tech's 0-1 in ACC play as they lost in double overtime to number 14 Notre Dame, 83-76. New York Knicks dropped their 11th straight. They're now 5-31 and and basically unwatchable. 1-21 and in their last 22 games, and they are on the road tonight in Memphis. And finally, the Giants have announced that Tom Coughlin and Jerry Reese will both return for this team in the next season. All right, before we get out of here, a quick shout-out to Greg Evans, a loyal viewer of the blog. Um, thanks for tuning into the blog daily. That is really encouraging. Also, check out our divisional games. We'll talk divisional games Wednesday. We'll also do some more national championship talk as well. You can comment, question, subscribe to my page. You can follow me on Twitter at YankeeBaller415. Also, check me out on SportsMindedNews.com. I'll be back on Wednesday. Thank you for tuning in to the blog and grill. Hope you have a happy new year, and I will see you on Wednesday.